I think part of the problem is they were storing a lot of uh, nectar and material right in the center of the brood box where she should be keeping her brood or towards the center. And I think that's limiting her amount of area she's allowed to lay eggs. So, and you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to add the super right now. That, I think that might be our problem because a lot of the room that they, she should be laying in the brood box has eggs or it doesn't have eggs it has nectar that they're storing and like i said we're hitting a nice nectar flow so i'm gonna go and get the super and we're gonna put the super and the queen excluder on here uh so i don't have to do it next week so this is what you would have done in your week five you'd added the second box possibly removed your hive top feeder or your feeding source and installed your inner cover now i'm gonna go and get the uh super and we're gonna install that here with the queen excluder Queen excluder and show you how that's done now that we're no longer medicating and they seem to be storing a good bit. So just hang on. Alright, we're back. I ran up and got my uh this is a medium super. I'm cleaning the old burr comb off the bottom. Now I know I wasn't going to and changed my mind at the last minute, but we're going to add the uh, super today. As you can see, last year my bees, man, they glued this together really well. Mm. They started drawing that out. And that is some really beautiful drawn out comb. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but the cells all aim upward at a certain degree, which will help, uh, stops the honey from dropping out. So bees are like little engineers. They know exactly what to do the right way. And just about all these frames are drawn. I think the outside ones might not be. Yeah, they didn't touch the outside ones, so I'm pop these apart a little bit here. You should smoke your hive, but I was just in here and I'm only gonna be in here a second. And if I get stung, then well, ain't the first time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this off. Now we got the issue of our uh, grease patty that I installed. It's going to be against our clean excluder. So we'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to smash that down as flat as possible. And they'll actually eat that wax paper. Don't, uh, there's methods you use where you actually use newspaper because they'll chew right through the newspaper. Well, they do the same thing with the wax paper. They'll chew through it, eat it, and they'll actually recycle some of the wax. Now this is a queen excluder. This is the metal one from Kelly Bees. I really don't have any preference to the metal over the, there's a plastic one, and I'm pretty sure there's a wooden one, other than the fact it's more durable. Uh, you can find controversial videos over whether to or not to use a queen excluder. If it's your first year, most definitely use one. It comes in the kit, there's no reason to, and I'm really not sure the pros and cons to them, but it keeps the queen from laying eggs in there. And I do know my uncle didn't use one his first year, because he didn't buy a kit, he just bought a hive. And he actually had eggs and larvae that fits right over that grease patty nicely. He actually had eggs and larvae in his honey his first year. And the last thing you want to do is turn someone off of natural honey just because there was a, an egg or a, a, you know, a larvae in the actual honey itself. Now, your week five, you'll be doing what I did earlier. Attack, you'll be installing your second brood box, possibly. Removing your feeder if, if they still need it, continue to feed attaching your smaller entrance reducer and man they really glued this end piece together here see this is bee stuff the bee glue gets a lot harder once it's cooled down and when it's inside that hive it's actually warm so you want to try and break it up before you put put it away for the winter because if not you're gonna have a heck of a time all right and this would probably be what you'd be doing maybe week six or seven, depending, it all depends on your bees. If your bees aren't working as fast as uh, my bees or someone else's bees, it might be even longer before you install some of your supers. And you might not even get to it your first year, depending on your bees, taking how long it takes them to build all their comb and their brood chambers and everything. Like I said, mine's jump started because mine was already built last year. Word of caution, do not buy a pre-started hive from somebody. I know it may be tempting, unless it's somebody you know, a good friend, a reputable D B person or something, you never want to just buy one from somebody that had it posted on something like Craigslist. Because uh, foul brood 
if it infects your bees, you cannot get rid of it. And if your bees are infected with it, you pretty much have to bury or burn your hive because you will never be able to use it. The spores get inside the wood and they can actually live inside the wood for, I think it was up to like 50 years, which is a lot longer than the life of probably your hive. So that's something you wanna, and when you buy your bees and you get them in your box from your first year, you will not need to medicate them for foul brood, American or European foul brood for the, for the spring, because they've already been treated at the uh, dealer where you got them from. However, in the winter, you will have to treat them. And I bought the stuff already, and I will show you how to do that this winter, when winter rolls around. And uh, I bought a container of it, and it'll probably be enough to last me a lifetime for this hive. Now, that's installed. We're gonna put our hive top, or our inner cover back on. This one says this side up. Now in winter, you wanna flip it. But in summer, you want the lip like this to create an attic up top. There we go. And basically, all we did was we gave the bees room to store extra honey. So they're not storing it in where the queen should be laying eggs. We're going to put both the blocks on top here. Since the... Uh, since the queen excluder isn't glued tight yet and it's actually sliding around a little bit, I don't want this top blowing off of my hive. And I'm gonna clean up my uh, hive top feeder here a little bit and then that'll be the end of it. There's still some bees in here, so I'm actually gonna remove some of this burr comb and leave this sit out here for the bees to find their way back into the hive and I'm leaving it fairly close because some of them might not have ever, ever actually left the hive yet so I want to leave it right where they can find it and that's the end of our beekeeping episode uh, like subscribe comment questions any of the above I'll be more than happy to attempt to answer them or go in a search and see if I can't find you a place to get the answer or get you the answer myself all right, thanks.